SpaceX and Vastspace are planning on launching the first ever commercial space station no sooner than August 2025 on the Falcon 9 with the Haven 1 mission. It will sit in a 500 km circular orbit around Earth and will be able to have four people on board who will be sent in a Crew Dragon with the Vast missions. Today we are going to recreate the space station in Kerbal Space Program but instead of bringing it to low Kerbin orbit we will bring it into a Polar Mun orbit and even do a quick landing for good measure. We have liftoff of the Falcon 9. Now once again this space station will be going to the Mun and we will be vastly expanding the space station in the future. See what I did there? We are now doing our gravity turn and I quite often get comments asking how I do my camera shots like these in Kerbal Space Program 1. Well, it's quite simple really. So there are multiple camera modes in stock KSP-1. The ones I use most are free and locked, but these flyby shots, which we are seeing right now during stage separation, they are done with the mod camera tools. Now what I'm doing right here is tracking a certain part at a certain speed, but you can also use keyframes, which allows you to make some pretty awesome some cinematic shots and the shot right there from behind the engine was just with the normal camera modes and the engine that we were just behind has now powered down and we can deploy the fairing exposing the vast space station to the vastness of space. We are now pretty much done with our orbital insertion burn so now rise on Kerbin's terminator we can ignite the engines again to set the Falcon 9 on course to the Mun. As we are now leaving Kerbin behind and approaching the Mun where this space station will stay for quite some time until we expand the fast space station and bring it to another place in the Kerbal system. Eventually I want this station to have stayed around every planet and moon in the Kerbal system. I think that'd be pretty awesome. And maybe even while we're at it we could do like a grand tour mission. We'll see. And hey we are now in orbit around the Mun so we can detach the Falcon 9 upper stage and the vast space station is now in orbit around the Mun deploying its solar panels and now it is time to launch the crew. Whose Falcon 9 is currently standing on the launch pad? So, the time has come, the engines are firing, and we have liftoff of the Crew Dragon carrying Derpy, Clarify, and Werner von Kerman to the vast space station around the Mun. Now for Werner it is actually not the first time he has been to one of our space stations, because a couple of months ago, when we built the channel's first space station, he was part of the second ever crewed flight to that space station, and there only were three flights to have ever gone to that space station before I lost the save file. Now luckily this visit ended up being a lot better than his previous one, because if you are a long time viewer, you you probably remember him turning into a ghost and being stuck on that space station for a couple of weeks before magically reappearing at the Kerbal Space Center. It was probably because of a bug with free IVA, which we are also using right now, but this time luckily it won't happen. And I actually talked through a very big part of this entire flight because we are now on our way to the Mun and we have separated the Crew Dragon from the Falcon 9 upper stage. Now you might have noticed in the build that instead of using Draco engines on the command pod for the Crew Dragon, we actually just used 8 small Twitch engines on the trunk. I honestly just couldn't be bothered adding those Draco engines and they would have a way too low thrust to rate ratio to actually get to Mun orbit and rendezvous with the space station. But with the Twitch engines it can, as we are now in a highly elliptical orbit around the Mun waiting to meet up with the space station, which we were actually able to do in just one orbit. When we arrived at the space station we had to kill off our speed, which was kind of expensive because we were in different orbits, and we also had to change our inclination ever so slightly to match that of the space station. We actually waited until we were in the sunlight to dock just for the better lighting but wasting even more fuel but we are now docked with the vast space station there we go and derpy clarify and werner von kerman are now safe at the vast space station and it is now fully operational so derpy clarify and werner von kerman can now open all the hatches of the space station and board it derpy will go in first and claim a spot at the well supposed to be the glass dome where there were some weird visual glitches so you could only see through the window at a certain perspective and no before you say anything, it is not because of the fairing. Next up, Werner will leave his seat and float over to the crew cabin, which only really exists to make this station free IVA compatible. You could kind of see it as a sort of pressure chamber with the seats, but the main places where you are actually supposed to stay is just in the middle, the hitchhiker container, whatever it's called, and the window. But hey, this is case B after all. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could just place him in a chair outside of the space station and he'd still be perfectly fine. Clarify went into the hitchhiker 
like a container, the main habitation module, and we transferred some fuel from the space station's tank into the Crew Dragon's tank because we are not just going to the space station, but we are also going to land on the Mon for absolutely no reason at all. Honestly, I only really remember one Mon landing, the KSP-2 one where we went to the new Mon Arch, but I completely forgot the Artemis 3 recreation and the 100% reusable space shuttle videos, so yeah. Mon landing 4 I guess. We have undocked from the space station and we are now maneuvering ourselves away from the space station and also into a retrograde position so we can deorbit and land. Now I actually just decided to land on the Mon while I was still at the space station. It wasn't even my original plan and obviously with the crew dragon it might not be the most intelligent idea but I don't really care about that. What I do care about is that we are almost landed on the Mon's surface as we are just a couple of dozens of meters above the ground and now we have touched down on the Mon. A very weird sight to see a crew dragon landed on a celestial body other than Kerbin, especially with the trunk still attached, but hey, there's a first for everything, perhaps someday we might even see a crew dragon land on Neptune. If you're still watching, you're probably enjoying this video, so consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and joining the Discord server where Marvin Huber and I even have a Kerbal Space Program 1 multiplayer server. In the Discord you can chat with me and over 100 other people, show images of your awesome KSP adventures, send in video ideas for, for thumbnails and much, much more. It'll be the first link in the description. While I was talking about that, Derpy planted a flag on the Mon and we made a group photo before boarding the Crew Dragon again and lifting off of the surface of the Mon. We could see Kerbin rising from behind the Mon's horizon, which looks really, really cool. And now we can ignite our engines to first of all get into Mon orbit and then to escape the Mon's sphere of influence and return back home to Kerbin. We have now separated the trunk and we are now getting closer and closer to Kerbin's atmosphere. In fact, we have now reached it and our capsule is now smashing through the currently very thin air at several kilometers per second and getting engulfed in plasma before slowing down enough due to the atmospheric drag to deploy a parachute. There we go, and now it is just a matter of time before they splash down into the oceans of Kerbin. So ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed, please make sure to like and subscribe with post notifications so I don't miss a video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!